Good afternoon. Welcome to the NY and JPA weather video forecast. It's currently 1 p.m. and it's August 1st. We're starting a new month. So we've gotten all the way through July without a heat wave. Let's see if we can get through August as well. I think we have a pretty good shot. And of course, starting a new month, we start a new trend. Unfortunately, that trend means not the best weekend weather on the way with the threat for very heavy rainfall, especially along the coast, starting this afternoon. In fact, I'll show you developing it right now and continuing on through much of tomorrow as well and lingering a bit on Sunday too. Also, we have a new tropical storm, Tropical Storm Bertha. It's not the most organized tropical storm I've ever seen, but we'll cover it and discuss what to expect with Tropical Storm Bertha in the future. So let's get right to the forecast and see what's going on around here. So here is the latest observations as of 1 p.m. As you can see, it's still averaging below normal for this time of year. We have temperatures in the upper 70s to lower 80s along the coast. Notice the southeasterly wind coming off the Atlantic, transporting moisture into the region. We also have temperatures in the lower to mid 80s, just away from the coast, basically over northern Connecticut, back through the Delaware River Valley and around Philadelphia. And that is where we have winds from the south. As the winds back to the southeast and east throughout the entire Philadelphia and New York City metropolitan area, Temperatures are going to stall as far as warming and pretty much start to fall off back into the 60s as we approach this evening. One thing we could definitely expect for this evening is plenty of rainfall on the way, and I'll show you why in just a moment. Now take a look at the latest surface map. We have a stationary front here over the Atlantic. This stationary front is going to retrograde back to the coast as this low pressure system rides up the mid-Atlantic coast and towards the New Jersey coastal waters by tomorrow morning. As a result, we're, we're actually going to see widespread rainfall. Now, the good news is that there will be no threat for any type of severe thunderstorms at all. This is just a rain event. Possibly around two, three inches of rain right along the coast as you head west, less rainfall. But clearly, this is a weekend that we haven't seen in some time, actually going all the way back to early spring, maybe maybe late winter, where we've seen widespread heavy rainfall on the way for this upcoming weekend. So this high pressure system gives away, and in its place is a maritime tropical hybrid air mass with the threat for plenty of rainfall. On the water vapor satellite picture, it really tells the tale perfectly here. Here's our little subtropical disturbance that's enhancing this frontal boundary, and you can see the trough digging here over the Tennessee and Ohio River Valley, we have another disturbance on the way to really enhance this whole setup here. And we have another disturbance along the Gulf Coast. So basically, these disturbances are all going to lift north and east right along the coast and take all this moisture that is pulling here along the east coast and basically produce a heavy rainfall event throughout the region. Again, the closer you are to the coast, the more likely you'll see rainfall amounts of over 2 inches especially right along the immediate New Jersey coast, Long Island, and southeastern Connecticut. On the infrared satellite picture, you can also see the cloud tops getting colder. Now, remember what I told you way back when, that the colder the cloud top, the stronger the lifting. The stronger the lifting, the heavier the precipitation. And you can see, because of the thermal gradient that is developing along the coast, you see some pretty impressive lifting starting to develop and work its way up the coast. And that, of course, is going to correspond to rainfall spreading up the coast with it. So when we take a look at the radar, zoomed out a bit, you can see this mass of rainfall just developing and expanding and intensifying. And we have seen that coverage start to expand over the northern mid-Atlantic as we talk. In fact, as we zoom in, take a look at some of these little thunder showers here. It's very tropical in nature. Why is this important? Well, these thunder showers are producing one to two inches of rainfall per hour based on Doppler estimates. I have to wait to see whether the observations really pan that out. But the point is that basically tropical heavy downpours are on the way for this afternoon, making for a beautiful rush hour, by the way. And that's also going to continue on through this evening, making for a rather wet evening to start off your weekend. And let's face it, that rain isn't going away anytime soon, at least until Sunday afternoon or evening, where we get more of a scattered rainfall threat in place. Talking about the tropics and tropical downpours, we have Tropical Storm Bertha. 
Now, Tropical Storm Bertha is a rather disorganized tropical storm. The center is here. The storms are out here. Usually you want the storms to wrap around, and quite frankly, you want to see them intensify, which is not happening. Bertha right now has winds of about, let's see, 50 miles per hour. It has a pressure of 1,008 millibars. It's moving to the west-northwest at 21 miles per hour, which is pretty fast. And it's about 70 miles away from Barbados. Now, what does this mean? Well, basically, I'm expecting this tropical storm to move into the Caribbean and get picked up by the same trough that is going to produce rain over our neck of the woods. I don't see it having any impact on the East Coast whatsoever, but it could lead to some interesting enhancement of the North Atlantic Oscillation, which is basically that blocking pattern that keeps us nice and cool this summer and also likely to be a player for this upcoming fall and winter. So we'll keep an eye on this tropical storm and see if it has any significant impacts on the Caribbean. But other than that, I really don't expect much of a significant impact on the East Coast or even a minor impact for that matter. So let's take a look at the latest model guides using the Penn State UOL website. Again, for this evening, we have the trough locked in over the Tennessee and Ohio River Valleys down to the Gulf Coast, which is pretty deep for this time of year, to be honest with you. You have a southwesterly wind aloft along the uh, east coast, and that extends all the way down to the surface, except for the immediate surface where we have winds from the southeast, plenty of moisture being transported into the region, and that, of course, means periods of rain. Now, notice there is no strong area low pressure on the model guidance, and that's true with almost all the models. Basically, what we have here is an environment where we're having lift because of the contrast of air masses, not because of a strong low pressure system or even a strong disturbance. It's a simple boundary with waves of disturbances moving along that boundary. So as a result, you get waves of moderate to heavy rainfall. That's going to continue on through tomorrow and into Sunday as well. Now temperatures throughout the time period will basically range near to below normal. Near normal for low temperatures, below normal for high temperatures. For tonight, look for low temperatures to fall into the lower to mid-60s. For tomorrow, because of all the rainfall, temperatures aren't going to be moving all that much. We're looking at mid to upper 70s for highs, which quite frankly is well below normal. On Sunday, temperatures are pretty much average near normal for lows, lower to mid-60s, but for highs, upper 70s to lower 80s with periods of showers. So again, this weekend is not exactly the weekend you want to go to the beach, go to the movies, go to the mall, Go play some Monopoly indoors, but certainly not going to the beach. That is for sure. Now, for the start of next week, it gets a little bit better. We have a few scattered showers still lingering on with some variable to overcast skies on Monday. Temperatures pretty much right at near normal. Lower to mid 60s for lows, lower to mid 80s for highs. For Tuesday and Wednesday, high pressure will be in control for the most part. We have a cold front that will be approaching on Wednesday evening that will lead to some increasing clouds and a few showers and thunderstorms in the late afternoon and overnight period. So it's not a washout on Wednesday in any way, shape, or form. On Tuesday, look for temperatures in the mid to upper 60s for lows, lower to mid 80s for highs. Wednesday, mid to upper 60s for lows, lower to mid 80s for highs. And then Thursday, with high pressure taking control behind that exit and cold front, what we can expect is scattered cloud cover and temperatures falling back into the upper 50s to lower 60s for lows and upper 70s to lower 80s for highs as we move back into a little bit more of a cool regime in the pattern as it starts to reload, reset, and refire once again with below normal temperatures. That is your forecast discussion for today. Of course, I'm your meteorologist, Stephen D. Martino. Follow the latest weather information at nynjpaweather.com and nynjpaweather on Twitter, Facebook, Google+, and LinkedIn. Have a wonderful day, and as always, stay safe out there.